type will mess up your liver real bad and it can sometimes be irreversible. So be very careful when doing that, Lanny, if you're gonna do that. Yo, what up? It's a tip of the week, and today we're gonna discuss a response video from one of my most viewed videos. I was kind of shocked by that. But anyway, guys, if you're new to this channel, I'm Dr. Jared Williams. I'm a concierge dental surgeon out in Houston, Texas. And so I travel from office to office doing third molars, IV sedation, and implants. And the reason why I've created this channel is because I want to prepare dentists to get the success that they desire. And so I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks on how you can take your career to that next level not just from the surgical side, but from the thought process and different things and different principles that you could be successful with. So without any further ado, if you're new to this channel and you want to learn more about the content, don't squeeze. All right, guys, don't squeeze. If you found this interesting, share it with a friend. And what I want to do is I want to earn that subscription from you. So before you smash that subscription button, what I want for you to do is see if this is even beneficial. And at the end of this video, if it's been beneficial, what I want for you to do is I want you to then smash it and then hit the like button because that means I've earned your viewership. And what you're showing me is that this content is valuable. And believe it or not, if it's valuable to you, then it's valuable to your circle. So share that with them if I get and earn your viewership. All right, guys. So June 28, 2021, I made this video talking about the consequences of Tori. And so I posted this and I was just went about my day and I saw how many views I got. And I was like, crap. I mean, it's crazy. I have 82 likes. So I got all these thumbs up. And as you can see right here, 82 likes, no dislikes. That's pretty cool. And then also I'm able to see how many views there are, which is 3000. That's more than I've ever had. And it seems like my subscription, my subscription kind of jumped up. So I'm really thankful. So thank you for trusting me with giving you valuable, truthful information without bias that will allow you to smile after surgery. So I kept on getting these reviews from people like Kimberly, Leanne, Karen, Echo, Ramon, Amon, and I was like, man, this is pretty interesting. And I was sending these um, pretty long responses. So I was just like, you know what? If anybody has any conversation, have any more questions, I'm just gonna give a response video. All right, so I'm just gonna take it all the way from the, from the bottom and work my way up. All right, guys? So Jackie, I don't know if these are ordered, but um, Jackie asked, you're seriously crazy. OTC meds don't help when you have stitches in your mouth. Well, Jackie, it really depends on your scenario. I have been a opioid free practitioner for about four years now, which means I don't prescribe any narcotics. The only medication that my patients will receive are going to be NSAIDs such as ibuprofen, maybe a Toradol. I'll give a steroid that is like Decadron. Um, dexamethasone or I will use Tylenol. Those are my pain controllers. And the reason why I want to say that is this is that don't get it misconstrued. The type of medication like the hydrocodones and the Percocets and, and Tylenol 3s, those medications just make you want to fall asleep typically. They don't necessarily remove pain. All they do is put, want to make you comfortable so you can just sleep. Not comfortable is like remove pain but to give you a lethargic feeling. And so there really is no benefit unless you're not sleeping, why you wouldn't be able to just take Tylenol and ibuprofen. There's studies that show that ibuprofen and Tylenol, how I prescribe it with the patients that I give, ends up working it well. And then if we end up falling out of that bell curve, because I believe that not everybody falls, is every, you can treat everybody the same, because some individuals will have some very low pain tolerances just for some fact of different surgeries or they've had medications. And so I completely understand that. As a matter of fact, um, one of my patients came in the other day and he's walking with a limp and you know, I haven't never seen this guy before. And I was like, what happened? He was like, man, I got shot eight times. I was like, I was like, what? He was like, yeah, he was like, I was in my car. And I asked him, I was like, what kind of car was it? He was like, oh, it's a BMW. And I was like, all right. And it was just like, you know, he's like, it's a Mercedes. I was like, what kind of, what would be it? What kind? He was like, um, I forget the model. I was like, okay. And he was like, AMG. I was like, all right. I was like, what year? He said 2021. I was like, 
<laughs> I completely get it. <laughs> I completely, completely get it. I know my wife heard me. She's like, don't say that. But no, I completely get it. Like he's wanted to save not just um, his life, but his vehicle. But long story short, he got shot eight times. He was able to um, get his assailant and hurt him. He ended up getting caught and the guy ended up going to jail. And when I was looking at his medical list of my patient, I saw that he had all these medications or all pain medications and simply some Tylenol and ibuprofen is not going to work. And so for him, but for the majority of individuals, Tylenol and ibuprofen is going to do well. You have to stay on task because I found that when I query my patients and ask them, hey, what are you doing? They typically are like, I felt good and I stopped taking it a day after surgery. It's like, no, 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 your body's still going to be sore because if you even get a paper cut and you bandage that up, if anybody just glances next to you, you're like, ow. So it's, a, it's think about if the cuts are a lot much bigger in your mouth where everything's moving, there's fluid, there's food, there's all these certain things going on all at the same time. And you can't necessarily patch the mouth together. You just have to be patient. So Jackie, I don't know your medical history, but I just want to give you some insight that OTC meds do work. I'm sorry they don't necessarily work for you, but hopefully next time you have a surgery, you go to a provider who will have you smile after surgery. And that's coming. I'm going to be certifying doctors to be certified in these techniques. So if you're one of those doctors, reach out to us and we got you covered. So Gija or Giga, forgive me, Virgin, <laughs> Giga Virgin said, I don't get it. How does the palate heal after the surgery? I'm 14 and is there any risk? All right. So, um, Virgin, Giga, Gija, forgive me, I'm butchering your name, but um, the palate heals the same way like the other body heals. Um, the body likes to heal from the inside out. And so typically when you do a tori removal, there's a lot of bone that's present. And so when you smooth out that bone, what happens is the body collapses. When that happens is there's a lot of tissue. And so you wanna, as a clinician, as a doctor, as a patient, you wanna make sure everything comes back together. But, and typically when you have two wounds, a uh, wound that's open, so if we're, here's the wound, and we open it up. What happens is as long as we put it back, there's gonna be a less of an open sore there. So if the tissues end up opening, it's okay because over here, the body will heal from the inside out, not from the outside in. So that's how that pay, that's how, um, that's how the body heals. So good question. I'm glad you're doing this at 14. Learn it now, but was going down the road and not, not knowing. So excellent job. So Ali says, how dumb am I for not wanting to take a Medro dose pack or antibiotics after tori surgery? Both medications totally wreck me when I take them. I'm young and in the near darn perfect health. Is the antibacterial mouth rinse they give you not enough to prevent infection? So, Ali, um, it really just depends. Let me start with the first one because I can get off track. How dumb am I for not wanting to take a Medrol dose pack or antibiotics? Well, it's not dumb. I mean, it's your body. So if you want to not take the antibiotics or the Medrol dose pack, it's completely fine. I know there's individuals out here that like to do everything from a non-pharmaceutical route. So they don't want to use medications from capsules. They want to do things more nature perspective so that's up to you i mean um, my wife she likes to do a lot of things natural so there's different things um, i'm not going to get into it because i don't necessarily i don't know all the all the jargon i know a couple of things but i don't want to be a, a disciple of ignorance so I'll, I'll pass on that one but now nah, it's completely up to you ali and for taking the medications especially if it makes you a total wreck what you could do is um, have the doc give you a different type of medication that you're working with and or just let the body work its course. I know, I like that your doc gave you um, Paradex. Paradex can cause you any issues. Hope you're, are you drinking it? Alan, are you drinking the Paradex? <laughs> Shouldn't be switching it. But worst, um, what you could always do is just do some warm salt water rinses to decrease some of the, this is more of a home remedy that you could end up doing. Warm salt water rinses do pretty well. Um, but that's just to cover you, Ali, so that you don't have any underlying infection. And also the Medro dose pack is to help you out with pain. So sorry about that. So Troy G said, I'd love to see finger size Tori added to this video. I got you, Troy. Y'all need to stick up, stick, wait for this next video that I'm gonna upload because I'm gonna just give you um, a surgery. Y'all probably think that, man, is he really doing these surgeries? Well, I got you covered. I'm gonna um, take you behind the veil and let you see one of the surgeries with Tori. So smash a like if you want that. Or throw it in the comments down below. Shepard says, mine was a result of radiation after a bout with cancer. It's big, it's painful in the lower mandibular area, and I will require a graft. 
it will ground down to the marrow, but I trust my surgeon. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you have a surgeon that could help you out. It sucks to have cancer. You know, my mom, she is a double cancer survivor. So just be at peace, stay encouraged. But if you trust your surgeon, kudos to you. So that's pretty, that's all I gotta say there. I'm glad that you have a good surgeon, not many people do. Oh yes, if I tell you, so Lanny says, oh yes, if they tell you every six hours, believe me, four to five hours, don't wait for the pain to start. Lanny, thank you. Lanny Pleasant, excellent, thank you. I'm so glad you said this because a lot of individuals, what they'll typically end up doing, they'll wait. And what I do with my patients, I used to alternate ibuprofen and Tylenol, but sometimes people get lazy, so now I just put them together and just stay on the six hour regimen because you don't wanna wait, like Lanny said, for this pain medication. What she's done is she's, she's reduced the time. Now be very careful, Lanny, when doing that because if you take in the excess of 4,000 milligrams a day, you can really do some damage. Tylenol. Tylenol mess up your liver real bad and it could sometimes be irreversible. So be very careful when doing that, Lanny. If you're gonna do that, shrink your doses and do it on that realm opposed to increase staying the doses that same increase them down because you don't want to mess up your kidney and liver um, with Tylenol ibuprofen just giving you a heads up all right so echo fox trot he said he came for dental advice subscribe for the compassion and biblical coats god bless you hey echo fox trot 94 thank you yes i follow biblical principles i've um studied the most successful people on the planet for the last seven years and I saw a pattern that they're all following biblical principles, but you don't have to believe in Christ or Jesus or God or any of those different things. All you gotta do is follow principles and I don't care what you believe in. If you follow the principles, you're gonna get the right outcomes. So yeah, um, Echo Fox Trot, yeah, um, a lot of these principles I'm giving y'all right now are straight coming straight out of the Bible one way, form or fashion. So yeah, I love it and it works every single time. So thanks. As a matter of fact, me creating this vid <laughs> these videos <laughs> are just me being faithful over a few things and being made rule over many. So yeah, thank you for that. And Echo Foxtrot, thank you for the subscription. If I'm benefiting you and anybody else that's watching this, don't squeeze this information. Have your colleagues and friends subscribe to this channel, all right? And um, then we have Karen. Karen Figgy says, anticipating buccal exostosis removing so educating myself. Your videos are very helpful. Karen, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad that you find these videos very helpful. I will say this, buccal exostosis for individuals that are listening, all it is is just the bone on the outside. So you have a palate, you have a tori that's in the palate. All right, so here's some tori. So this is a palatal tori here. This is a um, lingual tori here. This is another lingual tori. As you can see, these things tend to get pretty massive over time. Um, but as you can see right here, this is a buccal exostosis because as you can see, you tell the difference because it's not by the tongue or is it by the roof of the mouth. It's gonna be on the outside. So it could either be on by your cheek, on top or on bottom in the front, around your um, gums area in the front. Those are exostosis. So I just wanna give you all a heads up there. But those are the difference. So if we go in back and forth on, you know, what's the difference between a palatal, lingual, and then an exososis, those are different. And these things, because as you can see, they get pretty large, they can be very small. So I'm glad that you were able to um, see that and witness that. Lanny came back and she said, I had, bucket, I had a maxillary tori removal for a good upper denture fit. I have a wonderful fit. However, I had, it had to be the most painful procedure ever. I'm sorry to laugh, I'm sorry to laugh, I'm sorry. I'm just reading your comment. It says, but ultimately it was worth it. Your dentist should be aware of the pain and willing to provide medication. Oh hell no, we're not druggies. Yes, yes, yes. You know, uh, Lanny, I'm glad that you said that. Um, patients aren't druggies. Um, it's the doctors that are the drug dealers. And what happens is being ignorant, we prescribe so many that um, we've created druggies and so now we're trying to figure this thing out and so that's why i got a head start on this whole thing i was like i'm going to stop prescribing opioids once i studied to know hey this is not necessarily helping them all it's doing is um, potentially causing somebody to get addicted and hooked and the last thing you want to do is get hooked on these medications throw your life in a tailspin or family members or little kids around 
because it just gets to be a disaster. So yeah, Lenny, thank you. You're not a druggie. I'm glad that you have an excellent surgeon. I think you said that down below. Yeah, so as you can see, in order for a denture to fit, as we can see right here, you got a denture can't fit in this area, nor can a partial or something. So that has to be removed so it could be nice and smooth up there so they could go ahead and put a um, denture in there. So if not, it's just gonna be wiggling around. You don't want that. Upper dentures already suck to begin with. You don't have a real good seal or you're not comfortable with having something in your mouth. So just be aware that, well, they don't suck. It depends on where you are, but you get what I'm saying. Kimberly Bodie says, hello and thank you for your video. Today I had my consult with my oral surgeon at the hospital, all right? I have very large tori on my left lower jaw, medium-sized tori on my right lower jaw, plus two mandibular tori under my tongue that will be removed. In addition to having two teeth removed due to being compacted, that means she means impacted on my upper jaw, I'm quite in a lot of pain when my tori and teeth are inflamed and it's been untreated up until now as I didn't even know my Torah was abnormal, <laughs> LOL. The surgeon also informed me that he will not be removing the other Torah I have at the top of my palate unless it gets bigger. I have other complex health issues that will impact my recovery. What typically would, you reco would my recovery look like and suggestions to make the recovery process easy to handle? Thank you for your work, your kind approach in managing your patients. Yeah, um, thanks Kimberly. Um, so. Number one, most people won't know that they have something going on unless it's pointed out to them because if, just like my daughter, I don't notice how big she's getting until I look at a picture. I'm like, crap. So imagine if you are dealing with yourself on a daily basis, what is going on? So with that being stated, um, most people don't know that they have Torah in their mouth unless it, it hurts when they're eating or dark, dark from like, or, 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 or when they are flossing or trying to clean their teeth and food just gets stuck in there because the bone is just massive. Or when somebody says, what the heck do you got going on in your mouth right there? That's when most people end up figuring out that they have something. Um, so it's you're, you're, you're in the normal group, Kimberly, from that perspective. Now, when you start doing surgery and you have other challenges going on, typically as a surgeon, we like to ensure that the surgery goes, typically most surgeons want to make sure the surgery goes well. But for me, what I like to do is make sure that the patient is gonna have the best recovery possible once we're finished. And then I'm thinking about the surgery because if the patient's a poor candidate to begin with, and I do even the mi most minor thing, then the patient's gonna nail me to the cross and the, the doctor and the, the other doctors are gonna try to do the same along with lawyer and then it gets, goes downhill quickly. So what I like to do is make sure that the patient's gonna be a prime candidate for surgery if they are, then we'll move forward. If they aren't, then we'll take it in little bite-sized pieces. So I really believe that the, your insurgent who's gonna be working with you is doing it the right way, wanting to manage that you're good first and then they can do the surgery. Um, you gotta be careful as dentists that we don't get so focused on just wanting to put our posts on social media, do more procedures, build your resumes, and then also get after the dollar dollar bill, y'all. So. Be aware of that um, because at the end of the day, we are humans and just because we have some three letters across our, behind our name does not make us any better or better than anybody else. So just get that out there. So Kimberly, thank you for your comments. They're really appreciated. And I just want to say thank you for all those that submitted these comments. You know, I would have never thought that this video of all of my videos would get so much publicity. but. I'm here to serve you guys. And I don't know if it was more, it sounded like there were more patients and doctors, but either way it goes, anything I can do to be of service to you. I know there's several individuals that reached out to me in terms of wanting to get treatment and I really appreciate it. So y'all keep it coming. You know, also doctors, if you're, when you're watching these videos and you see that, hey man, patients are really appreciating the content, guys, I could show you how to take your career to that next level. So feel free to, if you are a doctor, um, either about to graduate dental school or you're doing a residency or you've been practicing for next level and you want to take your surgery to that next level, we got you covered. So what you could do is this, go in the link down below. We could set up a discovery call. We could discuss some things that we discuss, the things that where you want to get better. And if it's something we can help you with, then we'll help you. If not, then we'll put you in the right direction so that you can smile after surgery. All right, guys, I'm Dr. Jared Williams, and I want you to remember what looks hard is often easy. Make it a great one.